You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Shaws of Sunset After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Shaws of Sunset After Show. And that is, of course, the Shaws of Sunset theme that you hear playing in the back. We're back, guys, tonight for another Shaws of Sunset After Buzz TV After Show. Tonight we're going to be recapping Season 3, Episode 6, Persian Pride, and Episode 7, Velvet Rage, for you guys. I am your host, Michelle Renee, and I'm joined with... Lindsay Wagner. Hello, everybody. So Bravo keeps doing this weird thing where they play an episode sometime <laughs> arbitrarily on a Sunday night and then on a Tuesday night as well. So we will be recapping two episodes tonight. So let's jump right into it because we do have a lot to cover. Um, episode six kind of opens with Mike waking up and having, you know, some disappointment with the previous night at the club, which, of course, going back to last week was when uh, Reza just acted a fool at the gay clubs. <laughs> we had a lot to say about it. You guys had a lot to say in the comments. We appreciate that and and kind of getting into Reza and all of us, I think, realizing the damage that he's caused and the separation and the friendships yeah. that we're definitely seeing as, right now. Yeah, as aftermath of his actions. Um, so Mike goes to lunch with his brother, Jonathan. Uh, they go to Mixology, which is at the Grove. Mm -hmm. And um, his brother looked really cute in that scene, I will <laughs> say. Um, and Mike decides to call Reza, and Reza doesn't answer the phone. We then see, uh, you know, because Mike is kind of talking to his brother a little bit at the lunch about how disappointed he is in Reza's action, and understandably so. Mm -hmm. um, and then we see Reza's talking with Adam, his boyfriend, in their apartment. And, um, you know, Reza is just saying that he's so disappointed in Mike and that he's He's mad. not being a good friend. Yeah. Reza says that Mike yeah. is not being a good friend. Yeah. Uh, so what did you think of that? I, I just... Who, who, who did you think was right in that? I think, I think in that situation, Mike is right. I think Mike did the right thing by just trying to play the peacemaker. And I understand even MJ's point of view in trying to find out what was going on with Sasha and hearing Sasha's side. But then seeing the way that Reza acted, you still have to be a good friend and say what you did was wrong. I love you. But what mm -hmm. you did was wrong. And if you want to go, I'm going to go with you. But you need to know that what you did was wrong. Where I think that's what Mike was doing. Yeah. And trying to say, hey, take a step outside. We're not in a club. We're not drinking anymore. Do you see the severity of your actions? Let's take a look at that. And Reza just doesn't really care at this point. Yeah. I don't think he's reflected on anything that he's done. And the fact that he may have hurt somebody that needs an inspirational person and somebody to, to, to look, up to. look up to. And that could be Reza for him. Yeah. I think that uh, Reza's actions, um, and especially trying to deflect onto Mike, was his way of trying to ignore what he had done. You know, by him pointing out, oh, well, Mike's being a bad friend. I think he wanted to do that so he didn't have to face his own actions. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that an interesting thing that I kind of noticed from, last, from episode six to episode seven was that... Reza seemed to, in those, you know, few days, or I don't know, because it is production, so I don't know how many days it was, but mm -hmm. um, we definitely see a change in him in that maybe immediately after the incident had happened, he wasn't able to deal with it, and he still was in denial and not owning up to what he had done. But then in episode seven, which we'll discuss a little bit in a second, you know, he does seem to come around and at least is making an effort to admit it he's wrong. It's almost as if in that first episode there was just something blocking him. And maybe it was the fact that he had that conversation with Asa about yeah, his past and how he's grown that allowed him to get those feelings out. So that that internal block, that wall that he had up, he let down and he opened up to Asa. And we all saw a side of him. I know I felt bad for him even in that situation. But he seems joyous 
in this next episode. He realizes right away that he needs to apologize and make amends and stuff. And through the help of his friends and through the help of a therapist, kind of moves forward. But there was definitely a block and that conversation with Asa about his life and how he felt growing up and the demons with the suicide mm -hmm. and having a, a life of you know, dishonesty, lying to himself was an open door that he needed to do. Yeah. He needed to open up. Yeah. I, I wrote a lot of notes about this scene, um, the scene with Reza and Asa, mm -hmm. which was towards the end of episode six. I cannot imagine, you know, the life that he had to live growing up and having to hide his identity and, you know, not being able to be himself. But at the same time, I don't really think that that's an argument for being able to disrespect people. So while I like that he was able to admit to us and open up to the viewers about his struggles, I think the way he did it was almost as if he was saying, well, since I went through this, it kind of gives me... You can only use uh, your know. past and your your past behavior and how you grew up so much before. That's an excuse then. Yeah. We all have had trouble in our lives. We've all had bad things happen to us. But it's how you move through those things and do better and create something that you can be positive about and look back on and say, I move past that. I'm a stronger person because of that. So you can only use your past and what's happened to you for so long before people just, they don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. Stop, stop crying wolf. I get that maybe he hasn't come out and told many people about that mm -hmm. at this point, maybe in the show, but it, you know, you have to be, you have to be better. You can't use that as an excuse that that's why you said the things that you said that were vicious. Yeah. And maybe this is his, you know, coming Turning of age moment. moment, I guess. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's one thing to say it and it's one thing to do it. So now we have to see if he's actually going to apologize to Sasha because he admits at the beginning of this episode when he's eating with Adam, yeah, I do owe him an apology. He finally, Which is great. Yeah, because we hadn't heard that before. He says, I finally, you know, I owe him an apology. Um, so we'll have to see. One, if he does actually apologize, and two, how Sasha accepts that apology. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe Sasha's one to hold grudges. Maybe he's not. Um, but I don't know. Like it was, it was good to see too his uh, session with therapist yeah. and explaining kind of where he came from and his realization that maybe Sasha had stuff happen to him as a kid too and had a difficult life because he he obviously I love how the therapist doesn't say much but they 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 ask a question about somebody else and all of a sudden they say something and the person realizes what they just said and they go it's like a like a huge a light bulb goes, off. Light bulb goes yeah. off and the realization that Sasha is seeking attention and the main thing Reza points out is that Sasha is very flamboyant and Reza doesn't like that he thinks that he should act with dignity and he realizes, well, why would, and the, you know, the therapist goes, well, why would someone act like that? He goes, I don't know. Maybe as a child, he didn't get enough attention, so now he's acting out. And it's like, doot, 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 hamster's turning on the wheel. Oh, maybe he didn't get attention as a child. Mm -hmm. What happened to Sasha to make him the way that he is now? And I think that's what Reza needed to realize. He's not the only person in this situation. There's another person with feelings, too. And so that was good to see. And just literally this whole episode, his demeanor, his energy was so much more positive and good and he's still Reza yeah but it was a definitely a changed person and a positive person and I like seeing that side of him and I like seeing that he realizes his actions and his errors and let's hope that he can make amends yeah let's hope that he can I, I don't the whole argument about the flamboyancy though of Sasha I just I don't know to me I equate it like I'm black I don't know. That's like the only example that I have. I, I'm black or I'm a female. Like when when I see a black person like doing something that isn't particularly a good image for the black community, I don't get like disgusted to the point where I'm going to call them the N word, you know? So I just don't get why he's that. Like I, I understand maybe why he would shake his head at maybe the outfits that Sasha wears or maybe kind of question why Sasha feels he has to act so gay, quote unquote. But I don't understand why it affects Reza so much as it does. You know, it, I just think that he needs to kind of learn how not to sweat the small things. I think it's more so of a I, jealousy issue. Once again, like yeah. we said, you know, your boyfriend's bringing home a guy from the pool that's younger, handsome. And in shape. And, yeah. and so maybe Reza feels that 
you know, maybe he felt threatened by it. I can't, I can't see how. If his, if his relationship with Adam is good, then he shouldn't feel threatened by that. Yeah. But I, there's got to obviously be some sort of jealousy issue there then, other than just saying, well, yeah, he's flamboyant. There, yeah. It's not, that's, it's not a good argument. To hate, to hate someone with so much, like, venom. And, but I will say, <laughs> though, that Adam, I think, is a big part of the reason that Reza is more positive this episode and, you know, is kind of a better person than maybe he would be without Adam. And he even admits it himself. He's mm -hmm. like, you know, I wouldn't want to date me, but, you know, Adam is, he makes me want to be sweet and stuff. Yeah. So, so good for Adam. I love seeing Adam's fuzzy slippers. Like, I mean, I thought their exchange and stuff was really just a good, honest side to each other. And definitely the point that, that the show is trying to make is that maybe Adam is making Reza a better person. And that's what we need to see. Yeah. I hope, though, that this is more so a prediction, but Adam says something about, like, maybe inviting Sasha to the housewarming party. Don't want that to happen. Mm -mm. That's not the time or the place. Nope. It needs to be Reza and us. I mean, excuse me, Sasha and um, Reza just one on one, I think, to have that conversation. Maybe Adam should be there. I yeah, know, I think but. it might be too soon to have him over and hanging out and being buddy buddy with everything. Let's let's work through the apology and work up to maybe a friendship if that's what both of them want. But there's no need to get him involved in hanging out and being a part of the group or anything. Yeah. I just think that's just going to cause problems. Yeah. So, so I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we shall find out. Um, so, one one kind of residual effect of the whole falling out between um, Reza and Mike is that Mike kind of gets closer to Sasha, and Sasha also gets closer to Gigi. Um, Sasha's even hanging out with the group a little bit at the uh, what's it called Gay, Gay Pride, Pride Parade, Parade um, in West Hollywood. Um, so, do you think that the group is kind of I mean, obviously the group is mad at Reza, but do you think that the group is wrong in inviting Sasha in so much? Do you think they should just try to keep him at arm's length? or? I was definitely glad to see that when everyone was around and kind of didn't know what had happened with Reza, because Gigi and Asa weren't there the night of the club. Mm -hmm. So them asking Sasha what was going on and Mike actually stopping Sasha and going, hey. Reza's not here to defend himself. Mm -hmm. Let's not have this conversation. Mike is allowing Reza to be in, or allowing Sasha to come in and hang out with the group, but is still holding that peacemaker status of let's not bash anybody that's not here to defend themselves. We like you. We want to be friends with you. But our allegiance at the end of the day is with Reza. Yeah. Even though we know what he did was wrong. The same way kind of that MJ was saying, our allegiance lies with all of us. Lily, you're the new person in yeah. the group you're not really one of our friends, kind of going back to that. So I appreciate them letting him in. But I think even Mike made MJ realize at lunch in that first episode, in episode six, that, uh, that she was wrong in completely siding with Reza and not pointing out to Reza, hey, what you're doing and how you're acting is inappropriate. Yeah. Don't do that. And, you know, he he wants to have, he said that, she had Reza's back, and she needs to stand up for, and that she stands up first and asks questions later. And she needs to. And she needs around. to yeah. not do that. And Mike doesn't do that. And he got MJ's side, but there needs to be aware of right and wrong. So instead of just going straight to, well, I'm going to ask questions later. What you, you know, whatever. You need to be aware of. Yeah, this is right. This is wrong. I mean, what would you have done in that situation if you were MJ? Would you have? stood up for Reza right away and said, I don't care who this guy coming in is, I'm going to stand up for you, or are you going to actually try and do it? I don't know if I would have stayed and hung out and talked to Sasha, yeah. but I think I would have been somewhere in the middle going, pulling Reza aside and saying, what you're saying is wrong. Yeah. I'm on your side, but we need, you, you can't act like that. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like it's a very convoluted situation because we don't know what was said when they left. Maybe she did have a conversation with him, and maybe she did say, hey, wow, like, Reza, calm down, take a chill pill. You know, I'm sure they were both drinking. So if I were in that situation, I can't say what I would do. More than likely, I probably would leave with my good friend. Mm -hmm. And as we've pointed out before, MJ is, you know, trying her b very best not to ruffle any feathers with mm -hmm. Reza. So I don't think that she would have chosen this moment as the moment to kind of defy him and stand up to him. It's, it wasn't her battle. She would rather leave with him and keep their friendship alive than defend some guy that she doesn't even know. Yeah. It was definitely great to see Mike on the float, though, and getting into it, considering we found out last 
episode five that he was homophobic for a long time till his friend had told him uh, that he was gay. So I thought that was really, really great to see him getting a group of people together to go ride the flow and be Is a part of it. Is the friend Reza? I don't know if it was Reza or if it was somebody. Reza. Do you think the friend was Reza? Yeah. I think I, he's mentioned before. Like, oh, that was times, his first maybe. gay friend? Maybe, yeah. Oh, that, I, I mean, don't know. Even, I might be making that even, up. But. <laughs> even, even better, though, then. But, yeah. I, I mean, I think that that was really great for him to come in and, and be a part of the flow and bring Jessica around. Obviously, their yeah. relationship is blossoming. Um, but to have everybody get together, and it was great to see even, you know, Gigi show up. And then Lily they to be pull pulled Lily up. off the side. Yeah, yeah, just really, really nice to have all of them supporting that, even though they didn't want MJ and Reza to be a part of it because of the situation, which I understand. Yeah, because it, it looks like a good time. There was no drama for the most part, so. But they all mentioned, you can kind of tell that all of them mentioned that they did miss Reza being there because yeah. he should be a part of that. He it, is a huge he part is, of the gay yeah. community. <laughs> and especially um, the Persian community. Yeah. So. Next year. Next year. <laughs> next year. Um, well, MJ and Gigi, uh, their relationship is not doing any better. Um, last episode, we ca we see um, Gigi, no, excuse, Gigi's sister, yeah, is hanging out with MJ. They're painting. Was that They're last painting, episode yeah. or was that episode five? Wine and, that was episode five. Wine and sushi in okay. that episode and episode five. All right, but her sister mentions in episode seven she that it happened That it happened last, last week. weekend. Okay, so there's clearly some continuity issues there, Bravo. <laughs> but uh, So um, we see Gigi is... I guess. Wait, what have we they're seen? At the like nail, a, they're at the nail salon. The nail salon, salon this, this week. The, I thought something else happened last week. Last week. Oh, last week what we see. I? Last week we see. Or uh, episode, not last week, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Sorry. I don't Sorry, know. guys. Gigi, we're so confused. We're confused. Uh, Sunday, Gigi. Is at the is at the party. She wants to kind of know what's going on with Sasha. Okay, you see, yeah. she's trying to get information from Sasha. They all go to the pool party after Gigi. The whole time is looking for guys, which I wrote in the thing. Uh, what about Sean? What about Sean and Cheyenne? Or? Yeah, what's you're looking for dudes and you're saying you need your backup? She's and just boy crazy. She's boy crazy. But I do uh, I do agree with that whole like always have something something you know, on the back burner yeah. and ready just in case if you're not totally serious with the guy. I guess I get that too. Yeah, um, always but have a plan B. You can tell that she's she's trying to kind of get in with Sasha and have that there. Yeah, and and be a part of that. So this episode, then we see her uh, talking to Layla at the nail shop. At the nail shop, and Layla saying that her and MJ hung out and they had wine and sushi, and that she's helping her look at a listing. And Gigi makes a comment saying, "I don't want you hanging out. I don't want MJ hanging out with any of my family until she apologizes to me first. Well, what I thought was weird is I thought she was going to make a comment about. MJ and say something negative about MJ, but in her confessional she says, "Yeah, Lila, Lila, Layla, excuse me, is probably, you know, just enjoying this moment so much because this is the one time she tries, she gets to be friends with someone that's become so close with me." Mm -hmm. So I thought that I didn't see that coming, and it kind of goes back to last season where her and her sister obviously had issues. So those make me realize that maybe those issues are still there a little bit. I think they're there. I think I think Gigi's being a good sister and being supportive of the divorce and what's going on with her family. Obviously, there are still issues between her and her sister. I mean, you can't go from one season saying, I want to cut you. Yeah. To the next season being like, oh my gosh, you're my best friend. We're, everything's peaches and cream. It's not like that. Um, but obviously, she's pissed at MJ for, you know, going in and talking to Layla. But Layla's, you know, relishing the fact that yeah, she's got mm -hmm. MJ around and a new buddy, and of course Gigi doesn't like that. But then we later on see Gigi and Sasha going to lunch together. Yeah. And you know it's only going to start trouble and drama. She's only doing it to gossip. Yeah. That's kind of where my question earlier came from about whether or not you think it's appropriate for Sasha to be so much a part of the group. Uh, because I, I agree with you. I think the lunch was very contrived, and then especially some of the conversations they were having, and MJ even comes up, and... She purposely brings MJ up. Yeah. But she doesn't give Sasha the whole truth. Yeah. She and says, this, she talked, she she told my boyfriend something that wasn't... And then, yeah, and then he's like, he calls her a bitch, and, you know, so it's already just stirring the pot a little bit. But in this instance, I am on Gigi's side because... I don't think that it's right that MJ has just forgotten the way that Reza treated her last season and has just abandoned her friendship with um, G with Gigi. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's I think Gigi keeps bringing up the whole Sean situation, but I think what it's really about is the fact that MJ obviously 
just threw her to the wayside so she could go back to being Reza's right-hand man. And mm -hmm. I don't think that's fair in any instance, you know? Well, and I think that obviously her going out with her girlfriends and then seeing MJ out and being drinking obviously heightens any situation. So the issue that you have, she's being honest. She's being truthful. Mm -hmm. She's bothered by the fact that, you know, MJ is sitting there with Reza and, oh, everything's fine and she doesn't need me anymore and I'm pushed to the wayside and I was there for you the whole time when Reza last season was treating you like garbage and now you just forget about me as if I'm nothing yeah. to you. At the same time, I think that Gigi's being a little out of control and ridiculous with this apology situation. Let it go. Yeah. Get over it. You're creating drama right now with, you know, Sasha and bringing it up to him and just getting more people involved so they'll be on your side. Well, she, I mean, I think she kind of has to because at this point, who does she really have on her side? She kind of has her sister on her side, but obviously her sister's playing both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's no one else. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess she has to... She kind of has Lily on her side, maybe, because Lily doesn't really care for MJ. But, then but Lily, Lily's pulled herself so much from the group, yeah. for the most part, that she can't really count on her to stand up for her, yeah. because that's a new friendship as well. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's one of those things where, you know, you see someone new come into the group, and you have to get to him before everyone else does. If she doesn't get to him and get her, you know, story into his head, then the story he hears from someone else might make him turn against her. So mm -hmm. I think she's trying to get to Sasha before anyone else does and kind of, you know, mold him to be team Gigi before he hears anything negative about how crazy she is or how she's a psycho or carries knives or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you're, I you're definitely right on that. It's just, I think it's a, it's going to be more of a fake friendship with yeah. him. It's just going to be till, till the purpose is served and then she might toss him aside too. Wow. Seems to be a common theme in this group. I mean, we were definitely seeing a lot more of Sasha in the last two episodes, which is kind of what I predicted in episode five. I said, I think Sasha's going to be around for a little while. He may become a more central mm -hmm. character. We've seen more of him than we've seen of Lily. Uh, but, I mean, he's just here, I think, till Reza can hopefully apologize to him. And then, and then we can move on from that yeah. drama and storyline. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, just uh, just to remind you all, we are on iTunes, so search for AfterBuzz TV, find Shaz of Sunset, rate us five stars, and rate all the other AfterBuzz TV shows five stars. We want to hear your comments, what you love, what you don't like. We want to hear everything from you, so leave us comments, five stars, and uh, check us out there. All right. Um, so mm. Lily, just really quickly, um, she's been in these last two episodes a lot more than she has been um, in previous episodes, which is good because, you know, we she's some her. people's favorite characters. She's Lindsay. Of, she's, <laughs> I know. I, know. She's, she's, well, she's, I, I had to admit today, I just, as, as outlandish and as crazy and interesting as she can be, I just, there is something that is very likable with her, and I do, I hate seeing that people are saying she's fake and there are certain things about her that are fake but I think she's being a real person and I don't think she wants to start drama I think she wants to stay on the outside of that and definitely seeing how far she's been pulled back yeah. in the filming I don't think that that's just Bravo uh, not including her I think that's her she's making a her up. saying I don't want to be involved in this drama and well, what I think will help her are scenes like the one we saw in episode six where we see her being a businesswoman and we see her not focused on the superficial let me spend two hundred dollars on my dog's birthday party things of that nature because mm -hmm. uh, I think it was I mean I would admit Lily is growing on me a bit and you know, whenever she had the scene and she was in her office and uh, the lady came in to offer her this business deal, she she was asking, you know, such great questions and she was just so serious about it. And I'm like, she's a really good businesswoman. Like, she is. Go for it. And I think it's great that she kind of can do this whole thing where she is this Barbie. But then at the end of the day, she also knows her she works. stuff. Yeah. She works, I think she works hard, and and in her career, she obviously knows fashion, mm -hmm. and she knows the business of it, because she's asking questions about, what's my salary? Oh, I've, I have equity, so then I've got, I can become a part of a brand, and sa countering, giving a counter offer and saying, I'm going to, you know, let me, let me think about this. Let me look at this. the contract, yeah. Let me look at the contract. She's really being a great businesswoman, and you are seeing a very intelligent side of her, as well as the fun, cute, beautiful Barbie that we see, but a a more likable character because she's also real. She's she is yeah. trying to create something and business wise and create a lifestyle, a life for herself outside of just being this 
beautiful girl. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's definitely going to get fans on her side, if anything. I think so, too. And as crazy as she is with the dog party and having six seats and spending hundreds of dollars. And we, a we only dog see, psychic. We only <laughs> see $200, but I guarantee you she spent a lot more than that on everything for the party. But seeing that side of her and throwing this party and getting her friends together, you know, to have a party for the dogs, as crazy as it was, it was definitely a get-together for everybody. And I yeah. just thought that it was cute to see her putting time into somebody else and being down to earth and dressed down in jeans and everybody just looks so great when they're not all trying to be made up and perfect. Yeah, I really like Gigi without the extensions. I think Me her hair too. looks great. Yeah. Me too. Asa in jeans. I I liked everybody in the down in the down just chill and that cute little dog that looks like a fake little stuffed animal. I wanted oh, to squeeze all of was them. Was that Sasha's dog? I think it was Sasha's dog, the one that looks like Boo, the, the famous yeah. dog that's out there. Yeah. I just it was just a great nice side to see of of everybody just being down to earth and stuff but then we see you know Gigi's trying to start stuff and talking about MJ and all the issues she has I'm just like uh, let's just try and have a nice day without bringing up drama yeah and Lily's and, trying to avoid it. Yeah. I think we do also have to keep in mind though that sometimes there might be some production you know kind of pushing, pushing. edging them a little bit you know hey bring this up bring that up but I, I don't know I never know what is actually them thinking of it themselves and, and trying scripted. to start drama and what's kind of scripted. Because mm -hmm. even though it's a reality television show, you know, some aspects of it are fake. Not mm -hmm. to say it's not entertaining, because it is, obviously, but yeah, so. Well, do we want to get back to a little bit about Gigi and MJ fighting at the, at the club or at the bar and talk about the fact that sh Gigi did, MJ did apologize. To Sean. To Sean. She did put the, and she know she's not really apologizing for anything else other than to just stop what's going on between them. And I just felt like Gigi was just over expecting something more. And MJ was really just trying to have a nice night with Reza and Asa. Yeah. Well, that's that goes back to those contrived moments that I'm speaking about. Like they just happen to show up at the same place. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. But um, like I said earlier, I think it just goes back to the whole, you know, argument that. Gigi is pissed off because MJ dumped her. And so I think the only concrete thing she has to kind of not look silly and not look vulnerable is to say, hey, you did this and you called me out in front of my boyfriend, so that's why I'm pissed off at you. Because if she says, like, hey, I'm really angry that you, it really hurts me that you aren't my friend anymore when I stood by you last year, she doesn't seem as hard and tough anymore. She mm. becomes more vulnerable. She becomes more weak that she actually has feelings and she's admitting to them. And she does kind of hint at that. You know, she does kind of mention it. But I think that's why she's reluctant to just say, hey, this is why I'm really mad at you. It has nothing to do with Sean. I think that's important, though, to show that side of yourself the same way that Reza is obviously going to at some point to Sasha. When you open up and you kind of put take that wall down, I think MJ's more likely to listen and, and really truly apologize. But we, the last thing we see of that is the fact that MJ says, I, this friendship is over. over. Yeah. Well, I mean, people have different personalities and I just, you know, Gigi says, they say people are like, take a, pick a dog like their own personality and I have a pit bull, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and she is a pit bull and I think that she is probably under all of her hard exterior a very emotional person, but I don't think she's ready to show that yet. Mm-hmm. So I think she still has that wall up, and I think it's going to take a lot more for her to break that down and mm -hmm. deal with it. I think you're right. So I don't know. Uh, do you have any news and gossip? I do have some week? news right. and gossip. After Buzz TV News. And perhaps this is why I like Lily a little bit more, was after I uh, watched an interview with her on OKMagazine.com, uh, they asked her what, how her relationship was with the cast. So she mentioned a few people. She talked about Reza, and she said she loves him, and he's a natural star. And even though he stirs the pot, she still adores him. So that was her take on Reza. On Asa, she said she's an incredible woman. She stays true to herself, and she actually admires Asa. Uh, she said friendship-wise, she's been hurt by her, so their friendship must be on the rocks mm. currently. Uh, Mike, she said he's a stud and peacemaker of the group. And about Gigi, she said people warned her about Gigi saying she was trash and garbage, and she actually heard that from Reza. Uh, but she really likes her and says she's a true friend since she's gotten to know her. She's really been a true friend. So definitely need to hear. And then MJ, she said she has nothing bad to say about her, which was 
biggest surprise I think of the interview and her big thing was she said she's a real person when it comes down to it she realized the dinner was a turning point for her and she may be the cause of drama which she, she she hates. She doesn't want to be a part of the drama. Mm-hmm. She doesn't like it. And she exited the situation and said the dinner has effect on the rest of the season. So the dinner was... The dinner where The dinner they where they got into you're a huge not, fight. You're not, you're not really not our, our friend. friend. Okay. She said that's been a huge turning point for her, and that's why she's kind of taking a break, and it'll affect the rest of the season, which is obviously what we're seeing, why she's not been involved as much. But I, that interview honestly made me feel for her and like her a little bit more. It was very Miss America of her, I think. She did. Yeah. And I think that's maybe why I don't hate her as much as I could because she's not mean. She's a very nice girl. Mm -hmm. Maybe that, I guess some people can consider that fake, but she said she's being real. She just doesn't want to be a part of the drama, which I wouldn't probably want to be a part of the drama either. Yeah, I I admit it. I mean, I, I agree, not admit it, but I mean, you know. If you don't like someone, say it. Yeah. I don't have to say. Say what you mean, but don't say it mean. Yeah, that, that's sure. All. Yeah, agreed. So I don't know. All right, let's go into some predictions. <laughs> all right. Do you want to start? Now you're after Buzz Do you want me to start? TV. <laughs> um, it, yeah, you go first. <laughs> okay. So obviously, we see in the preview for this next episode that uh, we're going to see some sort of apology from Reza. We're not really sure on how it's if it's going to be accepted or not, um, and. We see G- Gigi saying she needs to be truthful with Sean, but what about? So I'm wondering if this is about the whole Cheyenne thing or if there's something bigger to this story. Mm-hmm. There's like more of a I'm dating somebody else or I've been seeing other people while we've been dating. I don't know what her thing is, but we're going to obviously, I think, have a nice her. big doozy coming at us next week. Um, and maybe she's just going to be honest about her feelings about MJ, but I feel like we're going to see that. I'm really excited to see Reza open up to Sasha, and I hope that Sasha accepts it and doesn't be an inst- isn't an instigator and make it worse than it should be. I'm really, really hoping that Sasha can, as Reza has reflected, Sasha can reflect also and say, I see where you're coming from, and they can mend fences. That's what I'm hoping for. That's my prediction. I hope that they can mend fences. My prediction is that no fences will be meant. Men did, meant, whatever, I don't know. Um, they are not going to, it's not going to. I mean, I think the apology maybe will happen, but I think maybe outside fact, uh, factors will affect how Sasha takes the apology, and I don't see him accepting Reza's apology. And if Reza doesn't, if Reza doesn't, or Sasha doesn't affect the, uh, accept the apology, we've got the relationship with Mike and Reza, too. Yeah. That's got to be fixed. I mean, Sasha wants to be on for the rest of the season. What what drama comes of him accepting Reza's exactly. apology, right? So where can we find you between now and next week, Lindsay? You guys can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram at Lindsay Wegner. And at uh, earlier at, for Supernatural, but that's on hiatus right now. So see you guys next week at this time. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Michelle Renee LA. And if you like other reality television shows on Bravo, I also do uh, Vanderpump Rules, which airs a little bit later <laughs> tonight. So check that out as well. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite After shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.